Greetings, Zimbabwe, Africa, and the world. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Titan Law. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today, I'm in conversation with retired business leader and entrepreneur, Kumbirai Katsande, otherwise known as KK. Enjoy this informative conversation. Kumbirai Katsande, KK, as I want to call you, and I'm going to call, be calling you KK throughout the conversation. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. You are the first person that we are having a conversation with in the studio since COVID, and we've tried to make sure that the space is uh, sanitized. T talk to me about how COVID has affected you, your workspace, your work environment, your routines, and that kind of stuff. I, I think to, to a large degree, it has not been too difficult mm -hmm. because um, I'm out of uh, what I might call what, executive management now, mm -hmm. uh, sitting on boards, uh, it's mainly meetings. Mm -hmm. So we've just uh, adopted uh, these um, uh, platforms, you know, Zoom, mm -hmm. meetings, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I've not been too affected like some who need mm -hmm. to be on the call face, meeting mm -hmm. staff, uh, mm -hmm. and, and so on. So. I, I would say nothing too, too, too onerous. Okay. Yeah. For, for your life, for me, going through your bio, is hugely inspirational. And when I was looking at your bio, I'm like, this is the life of one man. But there's something that stands out, uh, KK, and that is that you are Mr. Cerevita. People don't know that. You actually led the team that created Cerevita. There isn't a country I've gone to in the region where people don't talk about Cerevita. I know Zimbabweans in the diaspora, every time they come home, when before uh, COVID, they would take uh, Cerevita with them or ask families to send Cerevita with them. Talk to us, uh, KK, about the inspiration to creating this brand, the team that created this brand with you. Hmm. So it, it, that, that's, that's uh, obviously something quite close to, to me, mm -hmm. uh, Cerevita. It's, a, it's an amazing product. Uh, so when I came back from Jamaica, I'd been with Nestle in Jamaica uh, 1992. So I had a boss in Switzerland called Alex Jost. Mm -hmm. So he said to me, um, we need a new product. Mm. something that's going to be big. So when you give me your monthly report, which was a one-pager, <laughs> I want one paragraph to be on new products. What are you doing? Have you failed? Have you succeeded? But we need a new product. Our future is in new products. Mm. So, um, and you know, you can't keep writing that, uh, you know, we are trying, we are trying. That's, that's clear. Ongoing. Not. <laughs> Precisely. That, that's, that's just not on. So I, I looked at the market at the time. We had some imported uh, brands coming into the country. And uh, th th this is work that I did personally uh, with uh, my marketing background uh, to look at, uh, the, the, to map the market and to look at uh, the opportunities uh, with some very good uh, competent guys at the factory, uh, uh, Martin Tambanengwe for, for one. He had studied it food science at the local university here. Uh, so we, we, we went to work to, to see how we can use the equipment that we have, the capacity that we have, and the uh, uh, eating culture uh, of our people at, at the time. So a breakfast cereal, when I did the map, was it was clear. And I listened also to consumers, uh, what is it they don't like about existing offerings on mm. the market. Mm. Because one thing I learned in marketing is that marketing is about uh, looking for the gap. Mm. Look for the gap. I think in French they say chercher le creno. Identify the gap and satisfy it. I think we identify the gap and we say let's go for it. Mm. Uh, all effort 
was behind, be behind Cerevit. And of course, you know, with the Nestle world, with research, people in Switzerland, they help you with which uh, ingredient, how to treat it in the, in the factory, and so on. A lot of work had been done at the Nestle factory here. And, and in the Nestle world, there is what is called the Z line. The Z stands for Zimbabwe. Hmm. Uh, this was to do with the special uh, 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 technology for processing cereals, which was the Z line. Wow! Uh, that 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 was uh, done uh, b before I joined uh, before I joined Nestle, and uh, really ninety four ninety five we are on the market and. Uh, the rest is history, as they mm. say. W what gap did you identify? What was that gap? The, the gap was, you know, when people uh, are used to Cerelac, uh, they have a problem to graduate out of uh, Cerelac. Mm -hmm. So I kept seeing these 16, 18 year olds, even university students, still eating Cerelac. <laughs> so I said, there's a gap here. Yeah. These are the wrong people. This this is for children, uh, and and people come here when they go overseas. They take uh, mm. settle up with them. Mm. So and then we had these imported products. You put them in in your bowl and you add milk, um, but they, they were not as filling clearly as mm. as as settle mm. So we we wanted I think uh, something that was like settle but also which had a family or adult uh, 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 you know, sense about, about it. Mm. Mm. Does that mean then that the transition as far as marketing the brand mm. must have been easy because of a cellular connection or it was tough? Talk to me about that. <clears throat> In fact, the, 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 the marketing was not difficult because um, you, you know how people say um, a business it's a, it's, it's a company which has, <clears throat> it's an enterprise which has customers uh, uh, who are looking for a product. Mm -hmm. uh, you can extend your brands, etc. Mm -hmm. Or you have a product mm -hmm. and you're looking for customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I think we, 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 we had customers mm -hmm. and all we had to do was to give them a product. Mm -hmm. Just to say to them, listen, you have graduated and we have an offering for you. When we started and we were formulating, you know, Cerelac has milk in it. When we put milk into the Cerevita, uh, which was what we wanted, um, it made the product expensive. So when we looked at the alternative uh, offerings on the market, so we said, no, 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 that's not the way to go. Um, what else are other people eating? Mm -hmm in this space, in this market segment. And we could see people wanted to add milk themselves. So we say, there is our solution. We, that reduced the, the, the cost of the product. And we went in with an existing culture. What, what is it, it, it must make you feel very proud when I mean, you're retired right now. Yes. Walking across the airports, traveling across East, Southern Africa, all over Europe, and seeing Cerevita on the shelves. Oh, it 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 does it does. You know, I remember my last days uh, when I was working as a uh, manager at uh, Nestle here. Uh, we were getting calls from uh, airport authorities, uh, customs people in the UK, Plymouth, uh, Heathrow. What is this? What what do you put in this product? We're taking tons and tons uh, of this product in, in into the UK. And, and yesterday I was talking to the lady who is running Nestle now. She was telling me even in Australia there are people who are asking for it. You know, in in uh, in, in in Canada, somebody said they visited a Chinese shop mm -hmm. and they found Cerevita there. Mm -hmm. You know, so no, it's it's uh, you're right. Mm -hmm. I I feel quite uh, quite proud and. Uh, uh, about that product, and uh, I think my challenge was I always thought I would launch another product <laughs> after, <laughs> after Cerevita. It, it, it didn't happen, right? Uh, but I'm, I'm hoping there could be an opportunity to do something. Still, yes, still. Yes. Talk to me, um, KK, about your choice of uh, science, food technology, and, and marketing. Where did that come from? Who inspired you to do that? Was this deliberate? Was this strategic? Or you stumbled into it? It, well, you know, it was not uh, deliberate. I was actually going to study agriculture. 
uh, crop science. But as it turned out, uh, when when I got to to to, to Reading University and uh, um, they say to me, you say you were born in town, you grew up in the city. We think it might not be a bad idea if you spend a year on an English farm. <laughs> wow. Now, this was September. And, and you know how it's wet and mm -hmm. dreary. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Uh, you want me to spend a year on an, Eng on an English farm in this wet weather? Mm. I don't think so. So right there, the registration, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to, 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 to these guys, uh, what else have you got? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And they say, well, there's food science, there's food technology. And I said, food technology, what, what does that mean? Uh, she, she said something, some, some explanation. I said, yeah, I'll go for that. I said, yeah, four years. I said, it's okay. I'll sign up. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I that's decided. That's how it happened. Yes, exactly. And here you are. With, yeah, uh, I am. I, 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 I signed up. Uh, I must say, I've probably forgotten a lot about food technology <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so many years ago. Yeah. But that, that's how it happened. Mm. The, you know. the one thing that got me cracking as I was reading your bio is that you, you say uh, comic books uh, yes. were a big thing as you're growing up. And of course, uh, the, the Bible. Talk to me about your love for comic books, where it came from. Was it dad? Was it mom? Was it friends? And yeah. Yeah, it, it was friends. The, 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 there was, um, uh, my father was a pastor. And so we used to go to various townships. And, and uh, we used to visit townships here uh, and in the other cities, like Bulawayo and so on. And when he started, by the way, his, his deputy was Lafu Majaivana's father, uh, Reverend George Chuma. And uh, so when we go into townships, there's a gentleman uh, who had these comic books mm -hmm. in Zvaraseko. And I just took to, to, to these comic books. Um, and, and what I particularly liked was uh, about comic books is, um, you know, the villains always lost. <laughs> I mean, the good guys always, you know, got the better of the day. Yeah. Oh, the, this, this really lifted my, 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 my spirit. So I just went into comic books. If I ever had any, ex any uh, change in my pocket, I go and buy a uh, comic books. There used to be a shop at Kingston's uh, in, in town here. Uh, by then Second Street, uh, near the uh, Mikkels Hotel. Yes. Oh yeah. We in school weekends when I'd come into town on my way to my grandmother in in Barry, uh, I would stop there in the afternoon Fridays, and and buy a, a few book. comic books. Which one was your favorite? Do you recall? I I I must say um, my favorite. Uh, in, in, at first it was uh, Cowboys. Uh -huh. Uh, and and then as, as I later grew up going into secondary school, uh, it was more the Avengers, mm. you know. Um, there, there's a kind of a, a make believe, you know, the world that you go into, and 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 somehow. Uh, so it was the Avengers. Mm. The Avengers were mm. that, that, that was. My as favorite. as with the world that we're in now, with the games, uh, which are almost comic book stuff, as far as yes. I'm concerned, are you into that at all? No. 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 Okay. No, mm. I think somewhere I seem to have you missed. Lost uh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, the, the, also, the fascinating thing is your your um, identifying with uh, the good guys always winning, mm. which which connects you with the Bible. Yes. Um, talk to me about that. You know, my my my, my father is is a pastor, and and I think pastors. Uh, I'm I'm going back now mm. to to when we grew up in the yes. townships. They, they, they played a, a, a community uh, role, mm. I think, well beyond uh, uh, preaching, mm. uh, uh, praying for the sick. Uh, because remember, li life in the townships was very constrained. Um, and, and people had all manner of issues uh, with municipal authorities. And, and uh, th this was left to, to the pastors to intervene uh, with with the authorities and, and the communities, um, and and it, it was really very very clear with with, with my father uh, that we, we are here to do good. That that that's who we are. We are here to do good with our communities, with our families. That's 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 a, that's it. 
and and what is interesting is uh, in in the case of uh, of my dad this is a church which which he started uh, with with others like i say uh, 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 reverend george juma uh, and others um it, it 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 was it was interesting that it was a small group mm -hmm. Uh, I think some of them had come out of the Salvation Army, mm. the Assemblies mm. of God, and and what and is so the church called? Christian Marching Church. All oh, right. Yeah. So it's 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 really amazing that uh, as as part of the family you are sucked into this, mm. and and what used to happen is like you go to Sunday school uh, first thing on, mm. on on Sundays, and then there was a mid morning church uh, service. And you went back adults, again. You went back. So you, then you went home for lunch, then you came back for the afternoon uh, service. So in the afternoon, they had what they called open air service. So you had to walk around, you know, the streets, the townships, uh, you know. Evangelizing the drum, the evangelizing. And, and, and somehow, you know, beating the drum tended to fall upon me, you know. <laughs> So, so you, you, you can imagine, you know, you, you are 13, 14, 10, you're beating the drum, going around the streets, and your friends are kicking ball and, and so on. Um, and, but you're proud of it. Uh, precisely, mm. precisely. And, and I have to say, at the time, it, I, I, it was not a question of me understanding what is going on. Mm. It, it was a matter of... Uh, my dad is doing it. I'm doing it. You know, he says you it's do it. Thing. It's a good thing. You you do it. And and what I also find interesting is when we get to to to, to a church church meeting uh, place, if the others have not come, his his view was well. There's three four of us. Let's get started. Let's get, Let's on. get on with it. And I'm thinking there's three of us. You know, and he says, yeah, let's go. They'll catch us on the way. They'll hear the drum, you know, beating. Yeah. Uh, th these things make an impression on you. They do. Yeah. And anything from mom, what mom's side, as far as your brain? Yeah. My, my mom was, was a very quiet person. She studied uh, nursing. And uh, my father, he had a very strong character. And like his colleagues at the time, he was also involved in... Uh, 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 um, in, in the NDP to start with, and then Zapu. Uh, and he was detained. Uh, he spent some time uh, mm. in detention, mm. uh, you know, at, at the time. And, and uh, so, so my, my mother was, was, not, was not like that. Mm. <clears throat> she, she was much more with, with withdrawn. Um, but, but I have to say that there, there, there are things that you, you pick up because, you know, your mom spends mm. uh, certainly your formative years, your starting years mm. with, with you. And, and I think you, you remember certain, certain things. Mm. And I, I've said to people, one of the things I, I remember from my mother is about how to wash plates. Uh -huh. You know, just see, cups. Like, uh, how, how do you know that white cup is clean? <laughs> so I look at it and I'm thinking, oh, there's no dirt. And she says, no, no, no. Fill it with your hand. Mm. And you know what? You feel it and you can see, oh, there's dirt. It's not smooth. It should be smooth, you know? Mm -hmm. And how, when we grew up, we were using those metal uh, cups. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they had the lip. Yes, they had the lip. Yes, yes. And she would say, look for dirt under the lip. Wow. You know? Or when you're washing a fork, and she says, look between. That's where the dirt is. And I'm thinking, well, she had a nursing background. But I, I found it amazing that... Uh, it was so easy for her to pass on mm. some of these. Has this stayed with you? This has stayed with me. Mm. This has stayed with me. And uh, well, what I found amazing is uh, when I came back from college and uh, went to work for the airport, uh, one of the, I mean, in fact, the first task I was given was the fact that uh, the culture at Milk Lacto, it was blowing up. Mm. We, we were getting a lot of what, what they called returns coming back because they were blowing, mm. which meant that there was dirt in the milk. Really? Uh, so it was, uh, they, they asked me to look, well, why are we wasting so so much money and so on. And it turned out to be a hygiene issue. Wow. It was cleaning and uh, the whole cleaning regime around the, in the factories, mm. the, the selection of the pipes, are we reaching the right Mommy's temperature? teaching comes. Exactly. Come and, comes and, and that came back and I said, wow, this is what mom used to talk about. Hygiene, 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 you know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. First, I, fascinating. I you, you, you walk us straight to, um, 
Dairy Board as general manager of uh, Dairy Board. Pretty, um, uh, uh, 1983 to 1988. Yes. Uh, what were the highlights for you? Um, what, what do you re 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 uh, remember about your tenure at, at the Dairy Board? I, I must tell you before you, you answer that, <clears throat> we're talking of a uh, 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 thing that, for me, uh, Dairy Board reminds me of how this country used to work, reminds me of the culture that we had. I grew up in Magwegwe, uh, old Magwegwe, which was called Dark City, two rooms. Um, and in the evening, my mom would give us uh, two bottles of, uh, empty bottles of milk and seven and a half cents and would go and put it out in the street Yes. and would go to bed in the township. Mm. We'd get up in the morning, there would be two bottles full of milk, one mm. silver and one gold. Silver was for... Uh, for Full cream or gold was full, Go, full gold cream. was the full cream. Yes, and, yes. And it and was the there. silver was the ordinary. So I, I want you to deal with that. But what were your highlights for me? For me, Dairy Board was like an institution rep that reflected and represented who we were. Yes, I I, I agree with you. I, I think for me, uh, Dairy Board was um, was was really uh, amazing. Um, it was amazing. Well, well, to start, when I came back from college, I, I actually had two jobs uh, at, at the time. One was uh, to I go to work for, for Delta or Dairy Board, uh, and um, I, I decided on Dairy Board. Why, I, uh, Why Dairy Board? I, I have a colleague who was uh, working at, at Delta, and so I gave him a call. We were trading together. And so I asked him to say, listen, these two options, October 10, I'm starting. Mm. Mm. Where do you say? And he said, mm. you know. So I said, okay, I hear you. <laughs> huh? So I'll go away. I don't know what it's like. Yeah. But I have to say, when I got there, I gave him a call and I said, you know what? A toss of the coin, I think, <laughs> is, is what was required. Um, because at the time you had to deal with racism. Mm. I mean, it was right yeah, in your face. Yeah. It, it was right in your face. And uh, uh, the fellow I, I, I was working for uh, at Dairy Board, uh, and, and, and sometimes we don't see that how people in senior positions can motivate these youngsters. Mm. So, so he brought me and he said to me, listen, uh, there are two people in this company who know what they're doing. Me mm -hmm. and, and you. you. Can you imagine? I've just come out of college and this fellow is the assistant general manager. He's calling me. I know what I'm doing, so I'm thinking, wow. oh, there's something here, you know? Yeah. And, and what I also didn't realize at the time is uh, I, he, he, he was getting me so motivated uh, to think that, wow, this fellow thinks I'm like that. And, and actually, a lot of young people, that's all they need. You know, motivation. That that motivation. Affirmation. That's that that is so critical. That 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 for me was was one. The second thing, which I think led from that, was he said to me, "When the factory starts, I want you in there. When the factory finishes, I want you in there." Uh, of course, I thought, "Oh, they start at six or seven o'clock. By four, five o'clock, we're finished." At the time, milk used to come in the churns. These milk cans. Uh, they would be delivered at the factory at five in the morning. Mm. Wow. And sometimes the factory would be finished at seven in the evening. Mm. So at the time I was living in Glenora, so I had to catch the buses there, three, four in the morning. You know, the war was still on, 7980, when, when I started with Dairy Board. And you go around uh, the, the copy, mm. you know, it's kind of duckish. You walk all the way and... Uh, uh, to, to, to the factory. Uh, so I think that, that's, that's, that, that's the second thing for me. Mm. It's, it's motivating these youngsters. And then secondly, uh, to give them a task. Mm. And when people are young, I always say, give them a lot of work. Mm. You know, get them to work from five o'clock until they... After a few weeks or months, I say to myself, this fellow is a slave driver, you know? Um, and, and yet, if you ask me, I think this fellow is, is the one person that I owe a lot to mm. uh, because he really em empowered me, gave me so much to do uh, that I would say to him, I'm tired. I mean, Saturdays I'm in the factory, Sundays I'm in the factory. And, and you know, we had um, 
The factories we had was Chipinge, Mutare, the one here in Harare, Gweru, and Blawai. Mm -hmm. And we were making cheese uh, in Chipinge, cheese in uh, uh, Mutare, and also cheese in Blawai. The uh, Kadoma factory uh, was just starting. Mm -hmm. so, so you get a lot of this uh, work that is loaded onto you. You know, you have to be in Chipinge, you have to be there, and you're working at night. And, and I, I worry that a lot of our youngsters are not loaded uh, they, they have so much capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've lost that a bit. I, I think we, we've lost mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. a bit. So I, I remember that uh, specifically. And also I was given a lot of room to, 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 to make decisions when, mm -hmm. I, when I moved mm -hmm. into, in, into Dairy Board. Uh, I mean, I had tasks to, to choose a team of uh, people the, 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 the likes of Herbert and Carl, uh, I mean, the, the current CEO. I was, was going to get to that because yeah. I think there's a group of you, uh, KK, yes, uh, yes. you know, that we need to sit down with in, and make sure that we get this DNA from you before you guys depart. I mean, there's Eddie Cross. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Nyampinkita. Yes, Mishek. Mishek Nyampinkita. There's uh, KK. There's... Um, Anthony. Anthony Mandiwanza. Yes, yes. Um, what, what a crop of amazing managers, uh, enterprising people, disciplined people, exemplary people. Where, where, what is it? I mean, I spoke to Habit, and Habit yes. says it must have been the milk. Is, is, that, <laughs> is that how you see it? Well, you, you know, I was running the, the then new cheese factory in Kadoma when Eddie Cross, uh, newly appointed um, general manager for Dairy Boy, just came and said, Oh, I want you in head office. Um, you know, so uh, when I got there, uh, Anthony was already working at the Harare factory. And uh, so I became production manager, mm -hmm. looking after all the factories. Um, and uh, I, I really had this sense that there are two issues mm -hmm. <coughs> with, with, with the business. One was people mm -hmm. and the other was products. If we had the right people and with the right products, uh, we will win. And, and, and basically, that, that's how I, I, I approached it. Uh, I mean, Herbert's case is, 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 is unusual. I don't think people choose people like that anymore. I mean, he just walked into my office one morning. Yeah. I, I don't know whether I was too busy or what, uh, you know, in his suit. And, and um, so I said, who are you? He says, oh, I'm Herbert in color. So I said, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. He says, oh, I'm looking for a job. So I said, what can you do? So mm -hmm. he told me he studied science and so on. So I pulled out from the drawer, I gave him a form to fill, and said, fill in that form, when can you start? Mm -hmm. And he said, tomorrow. So I said, it's okay, turn up at the factory and so on. If anything goes wrong, we deal with it between you and me. And that's how Herbert... Uh, got the job. Got the job. Now, like I say, people don't do that anymore, you know? But there must have been something <coughs> in you and in him mm. that made that... Uh, Chemistry work, I, the I, connection. Yes, I, 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 I quite agree. Um, I, I think, like, like I say, he came in, mm. and within a few minutes of chatting, mm. I could tell that he's keen, he wants to do something, mm. and I said, well, let's, let's give him an, an mm. opportunity. Mm. And, and some of the uh, colleagues who were already in the, in the company, like Anthony, who was already working at the factory. And one of the things that we did uh, was we worked out a plan for a group of, of young people, and we sent them to, to, to the UK, west of Scotland Agricultural College, to do diplomas mm. in dairy technology. Okay. Uh, so that whole crop uh, were trained in milk. Mm. And I think what that did was to create a commitment mm. for the product, mm. for understanding milk. Mm. And you know, the issue with milk is you, you have to make quick decisions. Mm. Uh, if you don't, it goes it sour go on you. Sour. Yeah. And, and once it goes sour on you, I mean, there are all sorts of problems. It's not just the milk you've lost, it's the cleaning and, mm -hmm. you know, the reputation and, and, and so on. So I, I thought it was critical that we get this commitment into, into our people. And remember, they were replacing uh, uh, white people in these jobs who had not themselves got that training. Mm -hmm. And, and I think this is one of the things that I, I've learned through, through, through management, that uh, when you make a change, go to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an opportunity to go higher, mm -hmm. uh, to go further. Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's not just a question of, uh, you know, let's have another cup. That, that's not good enough. I think it's about, uh, it's an opportunity. Let's go to the next level. Mm. And, and then your next big job was with Nestle, yes. where you stayed for quite some time. Mm. Um, there must be lots of memories from, from you, the time that you spent with Nestle. Yes, <clears throat> I, I think certainly I, I was uh, a more mature with, with Nestle. I spent a year with Nestle in Switzerland and then two years with Nestle in Jamaica mm -hmm. uh, to, to understand the full range of uh, mm -hmm. activities uh, within the company. They, they had a system of international management uh, mm -hmm. training and that's the one that I, I went into. Uh, that's when I also uh, trained in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I think that that was really amazing. And, and getting into a multinational environment like Nestle, a Swiss mm -hmm. multinational, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the, the gentleman we had there, Helmut Maucher, who, who uh, since passed away in 2018, uh, uh, was really a tough uh, uh, fellow. I, I think the time that he took charge of Nestle, <coughs> I think represents a, a, a change, a change, a complete change for Nestle mm -hmm. as an international uh, food company, as the world's uh, food number one uh, uh, a company. And it was such a, a pleasure to be in at a time when he was really going towards his peak as, as an international, as an international manager. And, and the exposure that they give you, I spent time with Nestle in Nigeria. I spent wow. time with Nestle wow. in the Philippines. Uh, you know, Nestle in Sweden, Nestle UK. Uh, great exposure. It, it's, it's, it's such a, a great exposure. And, mm. and there are things that you see uh, uh, generally are the same, you know, things like governance, mm. uh, how things are done. And that, I think, was uh, very much instilled in the company culture, uh, what, what they call Swiss conservatism mm. at, at the time. Uh, and uh, you know how you, you at, at the time you get to Switzerland and your business cards are in grey. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the, this is it's, uh, you. You are not expected to be too flashy. The, this is not what it's about. Uh, you know, and uh, we trust our products, the quality of our products. You speak for us precisely. You know, and uh, what we say is what we do. Uh, we pay our taxes, we don't break laws, it, it's, uh, you know, and uh, we look for, for the right people. Like when we do interviews, it's not that we want to look so much at hey, what did you train in and so on, that you can train into a person. You know, you look into a person's eyes and you want to understand, can I trust this person? Mm. Mm. You know? Wow. And, and then you, you did something um, bold when you Held Nestle when they were when they would face the pressure from the first family, wow. forcing wanting to force them to buy milk <coughs> from Kushungo, mm. and you managed to ensure that uh, Nestle remained hundred percent owned. What did that experience? What was that experience like for you? And what did it teach you? Yeah, that 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 that, that, that was an interesting, uh, I, I think, time. Uh, in my management career uh, because c c certain things I think in life tend to be clear, you know, what to do. You, you kind of feel it uh, in your, precisely. You, you feel it in the gut, uh, especially in situations of, of crisis or complex situations. Mm -hmm. I think you, your gut tells you, mm -hmm. listen, mm -hmm. that's the thing to do. <clears throat> that, that's not to say it's easy. But what it's saying is that uh, when you sleep, you, you, you'll be okay. Um, and, your and conscience is clear. Your conscience is clear. Mm. And, and, and I think that's where uh, I, I put that, uh, that issue in particular. As you know, I, I was chairman of the company at the time. And, um, um, but I was now spending so much time uh, with this issue. With, on, on this issue, <clears throat> you know. Um, uh, such that uh, we, we agreed that uh, perhaps I, I should go back in, in, into management, uh, which was okay, but uh, to some degree it wasn't okay because, you know, these large companies, they move with speed. They do things which are not yet in textbooks, uh, whether it is marketing, finance, whatever. They really move, 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 move uh, at a very fast pace. Um, but for, for me, it was a matter of principle. 
uh, uh, to say, uh, do we have a contract uh, with, with this supplier? Uh, no, we don't have a contract. Uh, so what does the company rule say? Company rules say we must have a contract. Mm. So I say that's clear. Mm. That's what we do. Mm. Let's make sure we tell the president uh, that uh, this is the situation. Uh, and he did understand. We got word to him to say, listen, we, we can't. Uh, because you, you, you know what, 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 what happened uh, at, at the time was uh, uh, there's a journalist, there's a, a white farmer uh, who, who, who had a journalist friend on the, on the Telegraph in London. Wow. And when they came here, he found that Nestle was buying milk uh, from the first family. Mm. And so he got it uh, into the newspapers. So the CEO of Nestle is visiting uh, London and this hits him in the face. Mm. Uh, so I'm here and I, I, I as chairman, I, I get a call which says, listen, pull the plug. Mm. So I say, what do you mean pull the plug? They said, yeah, you're not buying milk from, from there. So I said, wait a minute, where has this come from? Mm. Uh, they said, no, 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 this thing is in the newspapers. It's becoming a controversy. Mm. Uh, so I said, whoa, wait a minute, let's think, let's think this through. Mm. Uh, is this a political decision or yeah. is it a business decision? So uh, the, 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 the colleagues in, in, in Switzerland then, then said, uh, how, how do you mean? I said, listen, uh, the company has been here since 1959. Uh, those are colonial days. Then we had a settler regime and we continue to buy milk and process. Mm -hmm. We did not take a political uh, mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nestle in South Africa was buying milk under apartheid conditions. Mm. Mm. So is this political? Let's be careful here. So they came back and they said, oh, we hear you. You've got a point. Mm -hmm. uh, so we crafted a statement which went out uh, from, from, from Switzerland, uh, we, which was very clear. You know, we stay in, in countries uh, to do business. We believe in the future of countries mm -hmm. and, and so on. Uh, very businesslike. Uh, then we started getting boycotts. Hmm. Nestle products being boycotted in London. It became political. South Africa, Australia became political. Hmm. So I got a call. Two days, pull the plug. And these are the reasons. I mean, it was it was quite clear. Hmm. And and people were beginning now, in in those countries, they were making fun of the Nestle Nest and uh, putting you know cartoons etc. Et which uh, well, it, 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 it had got out of wow. hand. Yeah. So, so I, I perfectly understood and uh, I found a way to get a message to, to the president to say that, uh, listen, th this thing is out of hand. Mm. There, there's no way we can uh, uh, um, avoid this now. We, we have to pull the plug. Mm. And the word I got back from the president was, yes, it's okay. Mm. Uh, but I hope there I... There was no pushing back no, from no, him. No, no, he said, no, no, I hope it's, it's only me, it's not others and so on. But it was the other guys around him. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, the ministers. Wow. Yes. You know, uh, uh, who decided to get angry on behalf, on of, behalf the of him. Yes. So, so they're, they're the ones who started getting angry and say, oh, no, no, it won't happen. Oh, this and that and intimidating, you know, coming to see me at the factory. Where did you get the courage to stand on principle and to push back on these ministers getting angry on behalf of the president? What, what informed that courage? I, 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 th I, think, I think that there, there are probably very, very, very various factors. Um, the, the one is, you know, whilst we were growing at university and so on, we were already involved in nationalist uh, uh, politics at university and, and so on. And uh, I, I knew most of the people who then became mm. ministers. Mm. Uh, and, and uh, I know some people might think he, a person gets anointed because he's been appointed. It doesn't work like that. Mm. These are people that we, we, we've worked with and, and they make the same errors. And, they're human. Um, they, they, they're human. So, so I, I, I had that sense uh, with, with, with those colleagues. Uh, but, but the other, like I said, uh, was just, my, my gut just, uh, you know, he just told me, listen, this is nonsense. Mm. And, and I think nonsense uh, must be called out wow. for, for what it is. Uh, I remember one minister coming to see me at Nestle at night, uh, because at the time we had this tanker full of milk uh, at the factory, which we were not going to offload. 
And they say to me, oh, we must have floored the milk and, and so on. So I said, Minister, it's not going to happen. He said, no, 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 no. I said, Minister, where do you come in? Mm -hmm. There's a client there and there's us. Where do you come in? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't understand. You know, this, this is an arrangement between this milk supplier and us as a processor. Mm -hmm. And you are a minister in government. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we even had some Zana PF youths uh, come to, to, to the factory, mm. uh, to, to the offices, uh, to say, you must take the milk, you must, mm. you know. Uh, and, and of course, we, which was quite uh, uh, unfortunate, uh, uh, this uh, heavy, heavy endedness mm. on issues which were completely uh, uh, out of uh, uh, their, 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 their sphere. Mm. Uh, so, yes, you, 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 you say that I. I, I sense that there, there are certain things that we, we do in life um, without much having to think about it. You know, like to say, oh, let me go and ask my brother or let me ask my friend, how do I deal with this? And I, I just did that uh, out of the batting. And in the negotiations and discussions that I then had with, with uh, uh, the, 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 the president through the then uh, Minister of Industry, mm. uh, Welshman, uh, um it, it 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 was very clear that I needed to have a mandate and, and Nestle was very good. They they gave me the mandate to say, listen, you, you negotiate uh, on behalf of, of the company, these are the parameters. Uh, and I remember one okay, minister saying to me, Ah, oh, you are coming. Said, no, 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 no. We want uh, the shareholder. And I said, No, no. I represent uh, the shareholder. Uh, that, that's what I'm here for. If I sign, they they, they are beholden to that. Mm -hmm. If I make a mistake, tough. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what I'm here for. Uh, you know, and, and so so that that, that helps mm. when people have that mm. kind of level of confidence in you. It, it helps, uh, and you know very well that wow, I have mm. to, mm. to 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 make uh, the, the the right decision. Mm. I mean, the police picked me up, um, friend, and uh, took me to the central uh, charge office here, uh, and and they said we want you to to tell us why you are not buying the milk from Kushungo. Yes. And I, I, they picked me up and our finance director at the time, Farah Munez, and uh, so we started writing and of course I sent word to our lawyer at the time, uh, Selby, Selby Watcher. Watcher. Yes. And uh, Selby then contacted the Minister of Industry, uh, Welshman, who then went to see the President. And, and the uh, Welshman uh, says, he asked the President, why, why have you arrested him? And, and he says, the President says, I hope it's not about my milk. <laughs> this is not something to arrest someone for. No, 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 no. So, so, the, then he said, let me ask uh, Shuri. So he called Shuri and Shuri said, no, 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 I know nothing about it. So I was released, you know, a few hours. So they said, no, no, So you clearly can. somebody somewhere was, like you mm -hmm. said, getting angry on behalf of the president. Yes. And yes. doing their own stuff. And, and doing their own stuff. And uh, so I was released and uh, went to see. By the way, I'd closed the factory and, and sent all the uh, expatriates home. Um, because of this incident? Yeah, because of this incident. We, we closed the factory and uh, we were not taking How, how much of this KK happens in the country where people get angry on behalf of the head of state and he has got no idea sometimes? How, what, what do you think? Well, I... I would think it. I would think that th this happens quite, uh, quite often. I suspect not just in in a setting. I think it's a setting where you have somebody in authority, and then there are people around the person, uh, whether it's at a company. And I think for us in business, uh, these are things we need to worry about. And and this is precisely why uh, in business you don't. Uh, it's discouraged that uh, you 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 employ people who will get angry on your behalf, uh, you know? Uh, and, and I think a lot of uh, leaders in business uh, and, and other entities uh, get lost in this space, mm. not knowing that in fact uh, uh, we are creating uh, pro pro problems for, 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 for ourselves. Mm. Um, you know, people say, listen, I want people to work around me who will tell me the truth, the truth. even if I fire them in the process. Mm. And, and of course, we, we all get worried about, no, 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 I'm not here to be fired, you know. I'm here to, to, to stay, and to stay, I get angry on behalf of. That's, that's old school values mm -hmm. that should last in perpetuity. 
uh, ethics, the, 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 uh, the professionalism, standing on values, standing on principles, rather than being swayed by the individual um, or uh, the person that is in charge at that particular time, and being able to stand what you stand for what you believe for, believe in rather. I, I think you are right. I, I think a lot of us we we worry about the price that that we we think we might pay, mm. or the price that we see others paying paying uh, for 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 taking a position on mm. on, on on values. Uh, I, I mean, during that time on, on that crisis, I had one senior government official phoning me and saying, who do you think you are? Which country is this? And, and so on. You must buy that milk. And I'm thinking, which country does this fellow live in, you know? Uh, I've not broken any law here. And, and you, where does he come which in? Which country he is coming from? And exactly. he's asking you which country which is, this is. Precisely. <laughs> and, and, and I think this is, of, for me, it's very important mm. to see uh, that you, you should be careful not to adjust to his country, uh, but to stay in your country. Because I think the, the, the pressure to, for you to shift uh, from to, his country. To, to his country is, is, is very, very strong and, and, and is, is, uh, I think it's, it's very, very heavy. Uh, I, I, no, 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 I, I had some, some strong lessons and it strengthens your, your belief that, you know what? If if we just uh, uh, strict uh, uh, stick to the to, to the uh, uh, narrow and straight mm. uh, on, on these issues, come out right. we'll come out right. Mm. Yeah. You 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 were faced with a similar situation at uh, Ariston, uh, where their land uh, was going to be taken away for coffee and tea. Yes. And again, you still stood on principles. Talk talk to me about that. Ariston, you were managing director there. Yes. Chief yes. Executive. <clears throat> Yes, and, and uh, the fast track land reform uh, yes. was targeting productive co productive coffee and tea plantations. Yes, yes. And the student principle. Yes, uh, to ensure that did, that didn't happen. Speak to me about that. Yes, you're you're, you're quite right. Uh, and and I had uh, uh, Sanyanga was uh, my chairman at, at the time, and Robin Pawase was uh, uh, also uh, we, 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 with us. Um, so, I mean, the, 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 these are seasoned uh, business people, business leaders, uh, in, in the case of uh, Robbie, a uh, former senior civil servant, mm. uh, very solid. Um, and, and so it, it was not difficult, I think, with colleagues like that uh, on the board to, to take a view. Uh, of course, you're on the front line in the sense that uh, if there are any stones with are thrown, they, they come, come at you. you. Uh, and uh, the board members uh, mm. are at their homes, but uh, as a manager, mm. you, 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 you are there uh, up front. And of course, that time was just before the elections, and you know how uh, people mm. get all worked up uh, around that time, they get very, very excited. Um, yeah, that, 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 that was a, a, a difficult time. Uh, but to, 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 to the uh, positive side for this company, uh, they had actually given away a, a lot of land, I see. and and we're working with the farmers that mm. uh, the, the surrounding the, areas. Uh, yeah, pre pre precisely. Um, so that that I think was a, a, a plus when we got to senior officials. Mm. They could see that no, no, this, this doesn't work. Mm. I mean, we had the Kent Estate here. It was a similar uh, situation. Uh, the sad part is it takes away a lot of your time. Mm instead of attending to uh, real productivity issues, uh, staff development issues, markets. Uh, and you know how it's been difficult uh, for exports uh, out of this country, especially horticulture from that space. Um, so when you have a lot of those noises, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't help uh, uh, in trying to, to grow the economy. Uh, but yes, I... I, I uh, but what, what, what I find interesting in cases like that, just like mm. with, with, with the issue with, with the milk uh, uh, situation, uh, you don't have time to think about what, what's the long term uh, e, e, you know, on me. Uh, what, what you know is I'm doing the right thing. Mm. And, and in, in the sense that when you do the right thing, you've taken care of the long term. Wow. Uh, you know, I love that. Um, I love because that. I, I, I think too, too often, you, 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 you get lost in the 
ah, is this team going to take me where and so on? Uh, and then you lose it. You lose where you are. Uh, you know. So that 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 I, I think has been a, a big lesson for me to to do the right thing now. You know, just in do the right moment. thing in this moment. Just do the right thing, and and that will take care. You know, uh, because if you end up to say no, I want to be in this place and this place. When you turn back to say, what do I do? Uh, that not might not be the right thing. Mm. Yeah. The, 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 I must press you on this, which I've found fascinating about the way you think and the way you've conducted yourself. Is you keep referring to the gut feel. How much does the gut feel inform the moment as compared to? The analysis and, and everything else in, in in your leadership style. I I must say that there is a place for 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 the analysis. I I think that that that's very important in the sense that uh, it helps to to bring minds together. Uh, you you have to go through the analysis. You you have to do the analysis. Uh, but I think finally the analysis might come up with a solution which is not you. You know, you, you, you say, yes, uh, uh, that's what needs to be done. But, you know, for us to be who we are, uh, perhaps we, we, we might get there soon, but this is how we are going to, 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 to handle it. So I, I think finally one has to be, has to be comfortable uh, because I think if one is not comfortable, even the outcome of the analysis, you will not be able to... To get it right. Yeah, I don't think you will move in with enthusiasm. Mm. And if you run into difficulties, I think it won't be too difficult to retreat. Mm. Uh, but, but if I think you're, 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 you're working to your gut, mm. uh, but like I say, uh, with so many other guts, you, it means you, you need to do the analysis. Mm. Yeah. The, you've you've um, played a, a hugely important role um, in the running of CZI and therefore the interaction of industry, commerce with government. And one thing that strikes me is the role that you've played in ensuring that the private sector and the government work together. And I can trace that to your father as, as a pastor, a pastor's uh, son, um, and the gut feel and, uh, and uh, the, the measured way that you, you look at things. Talk to me about your experience in getting government and the private sector to work together. What have been the big wins? What have been the frustrations for you? Um, yeah, I think when, when, when I, I became pre president for, for CZI, uh, the first time I think it was 1998, mm. uh, I think I'd been chairing the Food Manufacturers Association, so colleagues were aware uh, of my interest in that space. Mm for business member organizations. And, and um, I also have to say this to, to, to colleagues uh, who are running companies, uh, they need to get more and more involved in business member organizations. Mm. I think they, they need to make it a serious commitment. And, and um, uh, sadly, that does not always come, come, come through. Mm. Uh, so yes, 1998, and, and immediately I, I was plunged into, into a crisis. Uh, I say plunged in, in the sense that um, uh, I think that is a choice. You, you kind of choose the battles that you go into. You can ignore them. They will certainly affect you. Uh, but I, I think you, you, you take a view to say, I, I think that needs to be uh, uh, dealt with. <clears throat> Remember, 1998, we, we had the mass stairways yeah. and the ZCTU. And we had Morgan Shangirai and... Uh, his, his, his colleagues, uh, um, and uh, Gibson Spando was the president mm. then of ZCTU. Uh, so uh, that, that, that was really tense. Mm. And, and so we, we, we discussed with colleagues in 1998 again to say, listen, do we leave this as it is? But finally, it, it comes down to you. you. You have to do the walking, you know? And, and so I went to see Morgan. Uh, they, they were in this building just uh, across the road from the Mikkels Hotel. So I went to see Morgan and uh, I, I, I said to Morgan, uh, you know, the, these strikes are not health. Uh, things are going to get out of hand here. Mm. The whole country is at a standstill and there's going to be a punch up. Mm. Uh, and, and of course, uh, 
uh, Morgan said, yo, 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 you know, we, we are right. The workers are suffering and the government wants to take pensions. They, they want to do this and that. No, 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 we, we can't have it. So I'm thinking, wow. Uh, but Morgan, I think you hold the key. And he said, no, it's not me. It's the other guys who are, who are intransigent. And I said, yes, to get them to move, you have to move because they think you are the one who is intransigent. Mm -hmm. So he said, I, I'm not. Everybody knows I'm not. You know you know what the old man is like. He's the one who is, uh, uh, you know, stands in the corner. So I said, no, 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 no. I, I don't think it's, it's like that. Why don't? So I had about like six, seven meetings with Morgan, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and then Gibson to say, listen, yeah, how do we get people to the table? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you are quite right. Your arguments, they, they make sense. Mm -hmm. And then from the business side, I, I had uh, Lazarus Lakama from MCOS, and then I had Ntlantla uh, Masuku, uh, who was president of ZNCC. Mm -hmm. yes, and yes. fortunately, he was my junior at school. So that, that helped a lot uh, the, to, to get the chemistry there going. Uh, so when, when I, I, I got Morgan and Gibson and the ZCTU Council to commit to dialogue, I then needed to get uh, business uh, as well. So I got Ntlan Masuku and Takama and, and we agreed. Then we, we went to see Florence Tauru. She, she was the Minister of Labor. Yes. And we said, please, can we need an audience with the president. Mm. We think we should have a dialogue. Mm. Uh, but before I went, uh, uh, we went to see the president. I, I said to Morgan, you know, the president is going to ask us. Uh, do you believe in ZCT? Mm. He's not going to ask me about you. Uh, he's going to ask about me, about my, my judgment. <laughs> because going there yeah. is my judgment. My judgment, yeah. my integrity. Exactly. It's, it's not you. Mm. So uh, I'm not going to trash my integrity there. Uh, you, what you say, uh, you have to mean it, and your team has to be on board. Mm. And he said, no, we are all on board. So I said, excellent. Wow. So now ah, we are talking about family with Morgan and so on. I think which always helps. Uh, and and then uh, uh, Mike Tower set up a meeting. We saw the president. I think September, uh, 1998. We went in to see him. It was a 20 25 minute meeting. Mm. And uh, national you know, crisis resolved. Yeah, 20 25 meeting, a uh, minute meeting. And uh, the president said, "Okay, uh, what, what, why are you here?" And we said, "Listen, uh, your, your Excellency, we think your interest." It's the same as that city you. You're after the good welfare of working people. Mm -hmm. You agree. Surely we can work something from there. And, and he said, yes, I, I, think, I think you're right. Uh, but do you believe in those guys? I said, yes. You're sure? I said, yes. They are coming in good faith? I said, they are coming in good faith. So he said, okay. I, I mean, what do you want me? What, what, what are you proposing? Mm -hmm. I said, uh, President, give us two weeks, uh, and uh, no, no, I, no, not the two weeks first. I said, President, set up six cabinet ministers from economic ministries, six business leaders, six from labour, and uh, uh, we form a, a tripartite uh, a negotiating forum, mm -hmm. and uh, we deal with these grievances uh, from labour. Uh, in fact, that's when TNF was formed. Ah, ah, those in, are, that's in, the genesis in, of TNF. That is the genesis of TNF, that it was formed in that meeting. And so the president said, fine, we will do it. Anything else? Uh, I said, give us two weeks. He said, no. When I come back from non-aligned conference next week on Friday, I want to see some progress. I give you one week. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. And he said, what else? Uh, said, uh, we, this has to be seen to be coming from you. Mm -hmm. No, we, we can't make a statement about this. this. This is yours. And he said, it's okay. Uh, I think George Charamba was the principal private sector. He said, yeah, the statement will be out by 4 o'clock. Mm. And it was out by 4 o'clock. That's what we're going to do. Mm. And, and in fact, uh, uh, virtually the, the rest is history. Within one week, uh, we managed uh, to, to get the issue uh, resolved. Mm. And, and I've always said, I think this is one of the roles of business. Uh, to, to bring uh, uh, parties together mm -hmm. uh, and create a, a sense of community. Uh, and, and, and I think uh, business needs to be sensitive to, to, to this, to, to be creating these mm -hmm. uh, dialogue platforms and, 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 and so on. And, and I think in many ways we've, we've picked up from there in, mm -hmm. in some areas. I, I must say we, we've not always, not always uh, continued uh, I think to do it as, uh, in my view, as much as we should, mm. uh, I think as business, we can and should do more. Mm. 
uh, I think business is a special place in, in the life of a nation. Uh, I think this is where innovation comes to life. Uh, the, this, in fact, the economy happens in business. You know, uh, when we talk about the economy, you may have the Minister of Finance talking about the economy, but where is it happening? In business. It is happening in business, mm. uh, you know. Uh, and, and, and I think when business sits back and, and holds back and uh, uh, does not uh, play a, a more active role, I, I think they are shortchanging themselves mm. uh, and also the nation. Mm. Yeah. Well, another thing that you're passionate about um, is appointment of women to head the corporate organizations that you're currently chairing. What has informed that for you? Well, I, you know, the, this is something that I, I think needs to, to, to have happened uh, well before now. Because mm. I'm thinking 15, 20 years ago, uh, the, uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, there, there was already a view that uh, the, the, the African uh, young lady is, is really the future face of Africa. Mm -hmm. And you, you saw uh, 10, 12 years ago, a lot of adverts, mm -hmm. these young uh, uh, African women on, on adverts. Uh, and and um, you, you see a, a lot of energy mm -hmm. uh, is, is there. Uh, and, and I would even say the, the, the African young woman is really the face of the African youth. Mm. Uh, there, there, there's no, 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 no question uh, uh, about that. I, I think it's, it's, it's several things happening at, at the same time. I, in the sense that uh, our, our economic uh, situation, uh, our history of uh, sending kids to school, mm. which means girls have also been going to school. Mm. And in fact, I, I've been seeing uh, bigger proportions of uh, girls, even in higher education, than, than, uh, than boys mm. or, or uh, young men. Mm. So, so I think that that pressure is coming anyway. Mm. We, we've of, been late on this issue. Precisely, yeah. we've been late. I think that that pressure is, yeah. is, is, is coming. And um, so we, we, we are seeing that in, in these particular uh, situations, I, I think key players have to be shareholders. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think in, in both cases, uh, uh, key players have to be shareholders. Right. Uh, and like I say, a lot of preparation which has happened mm. with sending kids to school and the, 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 the girl child is up there mm. staking a claim mm. and, and the shareholders, uh, it makes business sense mm. to, to, to do that. Mm. And, and that is, I think, what has really informed, informed us it. making those... Uh, those decisions. In the one, we are dealing with uh, consumer goods mm -hmm. in, in the case of Nestle and, and who should better know about consumer goods, about food. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's women. In mm -hmm. the other, it's a construction company mm -hmm. and of course we, we have a, a young lady there who is, uh, I, I think, doing a decent mm -hmm. job. And mm -hmm. uh, But also they, they, they know, just like us as uh, 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 black young men at the time mm. getting mm. into the corporate mm. uh, uh, sector, um, we knew that we had uh, uh, something to prove. Something to offer. Pre precisely. Mm. And, and, and these uh, young ladies, I'm sure they know that uh, uh, they, 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 they don't have time to make too many mistakes. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, people are expecting to say, listen, that they must uh, achieve, they must achieve. Mm. So they, they are really driven, just like we were also also driven. So I, I'm, I'm really excited and, and um, I, I think we it's marking a new uh, phase, I think, in our corporate culture here. Fantastic. Well done for that. And finally, let's talk books. Um, you know, you started with comics and then the Bible. Uh, talk to, to us about, this is a, a very popular part of uh, the show, uh, the books that you've read that have mm. made an impact on you. Um, uh, I know that you, you've fallen in love with the, a man of all seasons. Yes. Uh, you've read it a number of times. Talk to me about that book and the other two books that you want to share with our, with our yes. viewers at home. Yes, yes, uh, that, that's, uh, that, 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 that book, uh, A Man for All Seasons, which I, I came across. Uh, when I was still in secondary school, I, I was particularly impressed by Sir Thomas More's, um, you know, uh, resolve mm -hmm. on a matter of principle, mm -hmm. uh, and and of course, as we know, he he, he uh, 
went under the guillotine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, for for standing on on a matter of uh, of principle, uh, and and I also found amazing the the characters, you know, the Cromwells and Roper and mm. the, these characters on that side. Uh, they they were not really. The, the, these are the guys who were getting angry on behalf, on behalf. of the king, <laughs> um, you know, and and they, they were quite happy. The king wanted this resolved, mm. and and the actual method mm. was up to the guys getting angry on behalf of. So I I, I found that uh, quite quite interesting uh, the, this book, and mm. I, I recommend mm. it to to a lot of. Uh, young people to say, you know, reread that book and uh, mm. you, you, you learn something about life. And the other book is uh, <coughs> How Rich Countries Got Rich by Eric uh, Reinhardt. Yes, uh, Pro Professor Reinhardt, I, I arranged for him to come here 2013. In, in fact, he was here twice mm -hmm. and addressed uh, CZI and uh, the universities here. Um, and and it's, it's something that I found more and more as, as one gets older, uh, appreciating um, you know, the, 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 the fact that what, what makes a child walk is not mm. because it has two feet. Mm. A child walks because it sees others walking. Mm. Right. You, you've heard these stories about uh, children who are grown up uh, living with animals. Mm. They also they, walk they, on force. Yeah. Yes. So I, I never actually thought about it to say, but you know, you, you walk. But in fact, if, if, although I have two feet, if the people around me were walking on fours, mm -hmm. I would have walked on fours. fours. And, and, and I think the, the, this for me is the basic lesson from uh, Eric Reinhardt's book, mm. to say, look at how other nations have become just societies. Mm. They've become prosperous, you know, societies. Um, how, how, how come they look at what they have done mm. Uh, almost a copy and paste. Mm. And I know there are people who say, oh, no, no, we shouldn't copy, we do our own thing. And I say to a lot of them, well, where is your car? It will have four, <laughs> it will have four wheels. Mm. And this is a book that you've bought and given to quite oh, a number of prominent people, KK? I, I have given people mm. just to share. I got so excited mm. about sharing. The first book I had bought it at Nairobi Airport. And uh, I, I've since been buying copies. I gave uh, the late, uh, the former president a copy. Mm. I've given the current president a, a copy. copy. I was asking the other day to say, President, Have you where, read it? where are you <laughs> with that book? Because I've got another that's, that, that's coming. Yeah. Uh, Tendai Bitu, when he was Minister of Finance, I gave him a copy. Mm. I gave Patrick Namas, I gave uh, Bima a copy. Mm. Uh, pre precisely because I, I just thought we need to share uh, how come other nations have prospered? Mm. They are and we are in this sad state of Precisely. There are things that they have had to do, and we need to learn from, from this. That, that's really the big, big lesson, uh, and I keep, keep, keep reading that, uh, that, 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 that book, and I've recommended it to, to a lot of people. And the last book is uh, Collapse by Jared uh, Diamond? Jared Diamond, Jared yes. Diamond? Yes. yes, Collapse. And the, there's a section there uh, about the Great Zimbabwe. Mm. And what he says is, uh, you know, when we visit the Great Zimbabwe, among other, when the, where there's the Mayan kingdoms, the, the pyramids, we go there with a, 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 a kind of a romantic sense, you know, about, oh, you know, our forefathers, great people. And what he says in there was, it's a ruin. It represents failure. Now I say to myself, but wait a minute. There's something there. In other words, that represents a collapse. So, so normally we don't go there to learn, you know, to say, how do we avoid collapsing, you know? And, and how do societies collapse? They, you know, this happens and then they collapse and how do we avoid it? So that, that, that's, that's one of the books that I, I, I've always thought uh, is, is really, really amazing. Uh, I, I've taken groups of managers d during uh, the economic crisis when I was at Harriston. I took a manager. There is a, 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 a ruin just outside uh, uh, Nyanga. Mm -hmm. when, when you go there and you say to yourself, how did people do this? Mm -hmm. And what I've said to the people, if you look at the Great Zimbabwe, how people mm -hmm. stone upon stone, did they use scaffolding? Mm -hmm. How did they do it? These guys didn't have any engineering training, you know. Uh, 
But here we are with computers, with and we can't deal with basic issues of feeding ourselves, you know, feeding water pot to holes. Pot holes, water to the townships. You know, we, we have so much knowledge about dealing with these issues that when we look at our heritage of these ruins, I, I think we, 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 we to, to a large degree, we should be ashamed of ourselves, that we, we sit on our brains. Uh, we, we should be doing much, much, much more. more. Um, yeah, so the, the, those are the three books. What what amazing books are uh, uh, Kumbirai Katande, as I call you, KK, as everybody else calls you, KK. We could have gone, I could go on the whole day, KK, talking to you. Um, your life journey is an inspiration. And like your middle name, Shimba, you have sung your way through uh, uh, your life and inspired quite a lot of people. You inspire me. Thank and uh, thank you so much for creating the time to be with us on In Conversation with Trevor. Allow me, KK, to tend to our viewers, viewers at home uh, on the continent in the diaspora who follow this show uh, every week. To thank you for watching these quality conversations. Uh, we hope you're inspired today by KK's story. To ensure that you don't miss out on any of these shows, please press on this subscribe button and you get an alert every time we have a new show. So until next time, thank you for watching and cheers to you all.